in this video we discuss tips on perfluorocarbon liquid injection. This is a case of a regmatogenous retinal detachment in a pseudophagic patient. During vitrectomy, we can see retinal breaks in the mid periphery inferiorly and superiorly. The surgeon decided to use perfluorocarbon liquid. Prior to filling, it's important to make sure that all traction, especially in the retinal flaps, has been removed. Using a single bar cannula, a surgeon begin filling the eye over nasal side of the up disc, keeping the cannula away from the fovea. However, during the injection, we can note the formation of several bubbles in the process known as fish eggs. These small bubbles of perfluorocarbon liquid are a risk for a subretinal migration, and it's a phenomenon that can be avoided with some care. To avoid fish eggs, you can use a dual bore cannula to inject perfluorocarbon liquid while maintaining a constant intracorporeal pressure. That cannula provides an exit passageway for BSS and reduces resistance during injection. Note in this other surgery which dual bore was used how a single bubble of perfluorocarbon is formed. The injection speed should be sustained and gradual keeping the tip of the cannula always submerged while enlarging a single bubble. If you don't have a dual bore cannula available, a single bore cannula can be used like in the first case. However, keep the vitrector or a soft tip in the other hand aspirating fluid while perfluorocarbon is being injected. During scleral depression at the edge of the perfluorocarbon liquid, it's important also to perform gently and slowly movements to avoid turbulence and perfluorobubbles migration into the brick.